Hi, everybody. Greetings to you all. Yes, uh, you are actually on the Inside Show right now. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Um, you can just hit that subscribe button if you did not do that as yet. Um, you don't want to miss out on these shows. It's very insightful. That is why it's the Inside Show, you know. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. Next to the subscribe button is a little thing that looks like a bell you want to be notified about these shows and we will notify you so yeah uh, just uh, press that notification button that looks like a bell we are so happy to have you with us we thank you for tuning in yeah you are on the inside show with talk with joan thursdays and today we have interesting people in the studio because our topic for today is actually the life of a PK and PK means pastor's kid. So we are talking about the life of a pastor's kid. Um, and with me, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. With me, I have three PKs. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start with one and his name is Gabriel. He's going to introduce himself. Welcome, Gabriel. Thank you so much, uh, Auntie Joan. I'm gonna say Auntie Joan because that's how I, I know you. Uh, yeah, I'm Gabriel Edwards, and yeah, since we're talking about PKs, I am the son of um, Bishop Edwards, uh, Freddie Edwards, and uh, Apostle Sandy Edwards. And yeah, thank you for having me here today. It's such a joy and a privilege to be here uh, with you, family. Thank you, Gabriel. And then we have uh, Xavier with us introduce yourself please xavier hey guys uh, yeah i'm xavier hendrix i do have a show on the inside show as well but i am a pk yeah, for um for the past i'm 33 years old for 33 years i've been a pk i grew up in church it's all i know um yeah and that's me <laughs> that's how i'm a pk <laughs> yes and then we have um the one and only uh rose amongst all these uh, guys, Thorns. yeah, Thorns. they're thorns <laughs> um, to bring the softness in, you know. <laughs> and that is uh, Evangelique. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I am Evangelique Adams, and I am a PK. Reason for me being here. <laughs> I am the daughter of um, Joan Hendricks and Doctor. Carl mm, mm, mm. Hendrix. <laughs> wow, that sounds so nice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, guys, I came across something that I really would uh, uh, like to share with you. Um, that is, what do you do with a pastor's kid who has gone wild? Huh? Why do children of ministry staff so commonly fall away from their faith? Uh, so you know what? Um, do you know what the Kings of Leon, Marvin Gay, the Jonas Brothers, yeah, um, you know who also, Condoleezza Rice, uh, Phil Jackson, Denzel Washington, Daniel Tosh, Jessica Simpson, Aretha Franklin, Senio Hall, um, Anne Hech, and Katy Perry. I, I didn't know Katy Perry was a PK, but yeah, P Katy Perry was also a PK. Uh, they all have something in common, and that is being ministers kids, commonly known as PKs. And you know what? I'm so excited having my own two children, yeah with me on set and my best friend's kid uh, with me on set and I want to ask them um, take off the masks yeah let's be real because I think why I have the show is because we want to be real we want people to understand us um, and we want to let them know because sometimes people just act in certain ways you know and they don't really know uh, the pressure on PKs um, so I actually have a few questions that I really would love to to ask them because you know what um, as a pastor's kid the pastor's house must always be clean so <laughs> so in case uh, daddy brings home people so um, that was one of the things and then we find um, uh, uh, things like don't get caught misbehaving 
yeah when you with your friends uh, people always see you differently mm -hmm. um, not being like a real human being uh, being a teenager catching on yeah you know what i'm talking about so people always have uh, some something to say about you so the expe expectations are twice as high right um, and then also the participating in everything without even volunteering whenever there's something on at church you have to be there um, i know with my children they always had to be there <laughs> had to be there because from a birth guys they were with me um i had them in a little uh, carrier you know those little things uh, that we used to put the children in they were they were under the the seats and so on and so on and now that they are grown yo we just expect them to volunteer in everything so let us start with the conversation because i'm excited to hear what they have to say so i have a few questions that i would love to ask them that i would love them to be honest and open and just answer the questions um so number one is growing up in a pastoral home what was it like in the honeymoon stage that is where in the beginning when your parents just started the ministry um and you were there as a little kid so what was it like right growing up and being in that uh honeymoon stage can i yeah i don't know yeah, I think uh, for us, you know, the beginning it was more, um, how can I say, I think it was more like, not to say you didn't have a choice, but the only thing you really, that you were first introduced to was basically church. Because a lot of people, depending the environment that you are um, nurtured in, some of them say it influences your character, who you are, who you eventually, so the only thing we knew was was really was church you know um even on tv television it's always on i think today it's tbn you have church you've gospel yeah. uh the way times change you, we knew jimmy swaggart you know some people you know who's jimmy swaggart you know who's this you know all these old school we saw td jakes when he was wearing these big suits today he's wearing skinny <laughs> jeans you know so sometimes i've changed we've been there from the the change where church had no lighting you know where if the song had too much bass it would be classified as secular or is it right or what but today it's like yo you get people rapping you yeah, know so true. we've we've been i think because of the age where we at i'm not gonna uh disclose our ages because yeah. you know then there's no way old <laughs> <laughs> so we've been through i think the 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 fortunate and the thing you know we privilege is that we we've gone through the change of church from now look at today in an environment where we on radio or you know live podcast uh, churches never used to you just go to attend you go home come back yeah. you know yeah. sometimes wednesdays you know there's prayer meetings with the doily everybody's <laughs> sitting <laughs> you know it's like today yeah today <laughs> prayer meetings are it's you know it's online where people can you know yeah. connect on their phone right there so it's been good to you know to, to really be in there but they're not only just seeing the church but the response the change of people you seen hurt in the church how people get hurt yeah You've so seen, before we go yes, there before we stuff. go there uh because i know that that's, <laughs> that's what we've been exposed that's to the reality. Yeah, that's, that's the what reality that's the reality so what will xavier say what is the for, for me as far as the honeymoon stages of the church starting so i was was a i was was a weird setup because we started in uh, the church started at the house yeah and so you couldn't church was literally part of the house you couldn't go we didn't go to church we were at church already <laughs> when you wake up church. so so the church started in the house when we were in elders and there was eight people there and you know with a little guitar and a microphone and all that and so our stages coming up when the church moved from the house to a to my dad had this little classroom i think it was renting from the school or yeah whatever. And so we then moved to the classroom. And so everything that was part of the house was part of the church. Yeah. Which means if there was a carpet needed at church, the house carpet would go to church. If there was a light needed at church, the, we screw out the gloves at the house to put in at church. If there was whatever was needed at church, 
the house would be, you know, would be the source place because at the time, obviously, finances wasn't the best. You you had to just do what you had to do to make this thing work. Yes. The time they move, you know. And so our beginning stage, what from what I remember, is the beginning stages was that even when people come to visit, there wasn't still money for putting people in hotels and whatever. If that pastor comes from oh, wherever, yeah. you know, you must you must give up your room. You must sleep in your. The real sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know whoever comes to, to come visit the church or whatever has to come stay at your house you know and so so that for us was that for me is what i can remember of the beginning stages of growing and you know starting church and all that kind of stuff okay. and john is laughing there it's like you <laughs> <laughs> the real sisters <laughs> do you want to add anything Ben? um for me obviously i was quite young yeah um all I remember is like Xavier explained now, the visitors. And for me, um, the building of um, the church in Extension 9, I remember the fun playing in the sand, um, the whole experience of always being outdoors and the visitors. There's still a pastor, I'm not sure what his name is, but I call him Pastor Boston. Pastor oh, Boston. yeah. Pastor okay. <laughs> um, so you remember certain things like that, that you remember it i mean it's how many years later yeah. and you still remember those kind of things so for me it played a role in a fun childhood yeah because when we started building uh you were there yeah you, you had no choice to be there and that's why you took the advantage to just be outdoors and play with the sand um so i'm gonna ask um uh when you were teenagers, did you ever feel like you couldn't be your authentic self? Did you ever feel like you? Um, obviously. <laughs> um, I had an experience where a girl actually tried to hit me in the bathroom at church. I'll never forget her. I won't say her name. Um, <laughs> I know her name, I know, I know how many kids she has today, <laughs> she's just stuck at the back of my head, but um, growing up, yeah, as a teenager, you really couldn't be yourself, um, people put this, they put you on a pedestal of expectation as if you were Jesus, Yeah. and um, it was very unrealistic, but it makes you feel that you have to act a certain way, you have to speak a certain way, um, you have to dress, kind of a, certain a, dress a certain way. I had a way that I dressed and then you would get comments about, oh, she's dressing like a prostitute, for example. And you could never be yourself in terms of something as small as you're dressing. Your friends was a problem, um, who you hang out with, you in a mall, the next Sunday, everybody knows who you were with, what you were eating, all those certain kind of things. And so I would say no for me. I don't okay. Know. No, what was, the, what was the original question? Could you be yourself? Could you be yourself? Your authentic yeah, yeah, self, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for, for me personally, I don't know, the games program, but for me, um, it was more of like where you go. And like what Benji was saying, that the people will see you at the place. And so I'll, I'll never forget there was just one day. Um, so I used to tell my parents um, because I like cars and whatever, so I was going to the drags and all that stuff. And so there was this one day somebody phoned my mother and said, yeah, I saw your son by the drags and whatever. My mother said, yeah, we know he goes. He, to he told us he's going there and we knew that he was there. So I don't know, people were like trying to look for like something. Because they us. thought the drags was a bad place to be and that's just where... With you race. And yeah. racing and doing stuff and, and obviously there were a bunch of other craziness going on there but of course you know i wasn't partaking in all of that but the point is that like, yeah we saw you by the drag we're gonna tell your mother so it was like hey guys now <laughs> you know what now so it was that kind of thing like you have to kind of watch where you go and where someone sees you and like oh gosh now they're gonna say they saw me here and, and so yeah that was one experience that i can remember of, of something Okay, you want to add? Yeah, bit? I think yeah, we we really played a, a huge role as um, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> at school. I think school oh, was yeah. hectic <laughs> yeah. because you know our kids would be the first thing they would always say. You sh if you wear a new pair of shoes, you know that just yeah. came on. It's like hey, the offering, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you know, that was like yeah. So <clears throat> you had to deal. You had to deal uh, with that. And but I think as time uh, progressed. Uh, 
what we had to understand, I think personally for myself, is that people never saw you just as you, mm. but they saw your parents first before mm. they saw you. Mm. And so everything you had to do, you had to first think of the church, mm. a place you go to, you know, is there going to be church people, you know, party you go to, are they going to be drinking, are they gonna be, because people are going to see you, but they don't see you, they see the church. And I even had it when, you know, they if you like to go, whatever this, even when you go to the houses first, you know, you'd get that preference, that treating yes. like, you know, it's the pastor's child. Yeah. So there was a point where you'd really, uh, the question would, uh, you know, appear or just constantly come up. It's like, do people accept me for who I am or do people yeah. accept me based on who yeah, my parents are? Yeah, because I wanted to say, how, how, how did it make you feel um, that people don't see you for who you are, but first see your parents? Yeah, I think at the at the preliminary stages, for me, it's like at first uh, you wouldn't understand it. So sometimes you'd ride that gravy train, it's like of course, you know, <laughs> we're sitting in front everywhere we go, it's like they're dishing up for us. Yeah. Like yeah, we're like the the Kardashians back then. Yes, it's like yes. yeah, I we're on fire, yeah, you know, red carpet, everything. It's like oh my word, we arrived here. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> But then at the end, you, you really uh, had to understand that, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. I can't. And this is where it might get spiritual that nothing can separate us from God. Yeah. And even from an actual side, there's nothing that could separate us from our parents. Even with myself going astray, there was nothing. People still knew who I yeah. am, whether my parents disowned me at the stage. They could disown me from certain things, but they could not disown me from where I came from, I'm this. So I think that is what I had to understand. And of course, with our parents laboring, working hard, there's certain things that we just have to, it's just gonna come our way. Yes, you know, true. that we can't, uh, they've built it, but at the later stage, like, they, they, so they, step, had stepped into ministry, it was necessary for them to do that. Even the exposure, the preliminary, at the point where they invested the small prayers, going to bed at night, certain things that, might not have made sense back then but now it really uh played that role and now you understand you know i want, um, I want, I want to jump on to the one point that gabriel made about uh about um the school that for me that for me was a big thing and um now that you brought that up it brought back some memories where, where when the ministry started doing a little bit better yes and the church was starting to get full yes and we were now able to kind of move a little bit now and actually you know everything wasn't just you know everything had to go to church we could start seeing and so my father was was somebody who liked to see his bands but before then when he was before he started ministry i think this is this is a good um kind of just thing to put in there that he, he was already in business yes and he was already successful business wise when we actually started when he started the church was actually the time where we had to give up a lot of you know financial freedom to make sure that the ministry works and so when some of that financial freedom came back a little bit uh where we could start driving nice cars again or not even just nice cars just any car then that would happen so they'd see uh, so i was at this particular high school they'd see my father dropping me off in the mercedes Benz, and then the first thing would be aren't you all from that church and listen us yes yes we are so now how are you driving such an expensive car because i think this this cliche was always that the pastors must wear old clothes and the pastors to show how yeah old because they are. of the because of the uh, of back yeah, because Back of in the, the days, days yeah. Like yes. You wear broken clothes, you must drive a car that you, you know that's taped together with duct tape and things. So, as soon as you have now something nice, exactly like mm, the offering here, to like eating the money, how can you afford this and that? And for me, that was always a thing where when people ask, like, so what does your parents do? It's like, Ish, if I'm not going to say, you know, church, then, it's, then the first thing people are going to say is, yeah, you'll eat the money and things. And so, then you have to kind of sometimes you keep quiet or you avoid the topic or whatever because you think if you are I don't have time now for to be asked about that you know so, so yeah so that's just to add on to that yeah that's true you want to add anything Veg? also with what Gabriel said when Gabriel was saying that when people see you they see your parents yes but for me I experienced it from a more negative side in terms of um, you start losing pieces of, of yourself, yourself. Yes. because you have friends that you think oh this is my best friend but when your best friend goes into a different circle and they introduce you never ever have i had a friend that would say 
um, this is my friend Evangelique. Mm. They would say, this is my pastor's daughter. daughter. <laughs> and in that moment, wow. I distance yeah. myself yeah. and I say, okay, we no longer friends in my eyes. We clearly don't have the relationship I thought we had because I thought we were friends. And now you introducing me as the, the pastor's daughter. daughter. Yeah. So it starts making you feel like, oh, are we just in each other's presence for you? Because we know as much as you don't want to say there's hierarchy in church, everybody tries to be close to yeah. the first family. Yeah. So are you just friends with me in order to get in? Or do you actually see me as Evangelique? I even had a friend that when somebody greeted me, they're like, what is Evangelique your full name? They asked who's Evangelique. And at that moment I realized we were friends for so long. So long and you thought Vanji is my name. Is my name. You never took that time. So I think for me, I got that from a negative side in terms of, yes, I was pr proud to be a pastor's daughter, but at the same time, growing up, it took out of me, my identity slowly started losing it because then I could never be myself. And the people you thought you could be yourself with yes. was the people yes. that didn't see you yes. as you. Yeah, because uh, we must also bear in mind that, you know, as anybody else works, you know, a father works for his family and for his children. And so also pastors work. Um, and, and maybe if you don't know and you wonder what they're doing at church, um, I invite you to come and have a look a little bit and check it out because they work very hard to get where they are today. And therefore, um, I just feel that it is more than right for them to eat the fruit of their labor as you get a salary at the end of the month. So pastors too have to actually get a salary at the end of the month. And therefore their children have to flourish because you know what? They're working in the kingdom of God. What a place to work for, you know, uh, because God will never let you go under. He will let you go over because you're working his kingdom. And therefore it is vitally important for us to understand that we are all working and this is the pastor's job uh, that he uh, uh, was called to do, that is his line of job. Uh, so yes, he must live um, as everybody else do. And he must get money as everybody else do. Let's just put it out there and put it plain and straight and forward uh, that they have to. And you know what? What you reap, you sow. So what do they reap, guys? What do they sow? What you sow, you reap. So what do they sow? You, if you must look at it, just go check it out a little bit. They sow such a lot that they have to reap the benefits. And that's what it is all about. So um, I, I, I don't know about, about you guys, but uh, what were the things you hated the most or resented the most as a PK? Because I, I know there's certain things growing up, as you guys rightfully said now, um, that the uh, people see you in a different way. Evangelic mentioned that um, uh, uh, you, you're never yourself. So pieces of you actually uh, starts, you know, falling on the wayside. And now when you're an adult, you must gain all those pieces back together again. So what is the things as a PK that you really would say? Um, is no has a bit challenging or resentful that you feel like, you know what, um, it, it's not nice. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> sorry, I think the, uh, the word hate was a very strong word. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> so <laughs> challenging sound, I think you brought me, brought me in the game there. So I think what, what was really challenging at the beginning is the fact that you had to share the time mm -hmm. of your parents with, mm -hmm. with people. Most because of the time, yeah, right? like you said, you know, if people would understand uh, the lifestyles of, of ministers, you know, pastors, people that work in ministry, it's not your normal day job from eight to five. Yeah. There's sometimes where dad has to live at nine. Yes, absolutely. But then something happens with a family member. Yes. Certain days when you have sports at school, dad can come because he needs to be there. So there were certain things that we had to sacrifice that, uh, 
other people, not necessarily other people, but you know, fathers could do for their children or mothers could, you know, do that time, you know, go to yeah. every sports game, go to everything. But Saturday there's a funeral, you know, and there's a soccer game where so there was a lot that you had to, to sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, so at the beginning it kind of didn't make sense. You always had that questions. But I think as you grew up and you you know you understood the uh, the the weight that comes with the core yes. of being in ministry, yes. I think it brought more clarity yes. and understanding. Okay, why you know that to mm. do that. So for me, it was just sharing the time, and of course, when especially when it comes to Father's Day or Mother's Day, when you have this appreciation, everyone's like, "Oh, we love you, mom." You know, it's like, yeah, "Oh, we yeah, love yeah. you." <laughs> That is my mother. <laughs> that is my father. So they can share everyone is like mom, 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 mom. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, and they also with the real the deal, <laughs> yeah. You know, especially you get it a lot with the prophets now, Papa and Daddy and so <laughs> Yes, go deeper, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, so I think yeah, those are the things that you have to you have to share. You yeah, and also when you when you sit at the table, I, I I'm sure you 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 couldn't understand why must he get up leave us <laughs> yeah. because a congregant is in need of yeah. his presence you know what i'm saying so yeah what would you say to me for um what what i really really didn't appreciate and still actually now don't appreciate is the fact that it's a very i don't want to use the word unrewarding but i would say physically in the world it's unrewarding uh, we know spiritually it, it's a rewarding, reward, yeah. It's a reward, it's yeah. A up for us. Yeah. That we know and we understand that. But for the for the general public, especially the issue of finances, especially the issue yeah. of the amount of sacrifice that we yeah. go into, especially those issues. And then when when um, when you out there and and God really starts blessing, and then that thing really pops up of of stealing money, and and so it kind of puts you into a position where you shy to say what you do or you shy to say what you're part of and there's one thing that my father taught me that i now need to that i have to always that i always have to think about every day because i'm involved in ministry also like and very involved like i'm here all the time and he always told me he says look um go home like what gabriel said now you always told me go home go be with your children go and be with your with your you know, with your wife yeah don't you know put someone in charge of that thing and you go home or leave someone they delegate someone and you go home because you don't want your children to grow up feeling like yeah daddy was never here daddy didn't come to the center and so recently there was a situation where my daughter is actually finishing school i'm uh, finishing um what do you call this uh crash. Crash, you know preschool and starting to go into school and i actually told my wife you know what I, we're supposed to be somewhere else but i said there's no way I'm not going to my daughter's graduation. It's her finishing preschool, starting big school, you know. So I can't not go to a thing. And then later on, when she's a teenager, she says, "Yeah, you, you know, it was always church yeah. before even came to yeah. my graduation." Or whatever. Mm. So there's where I had to make a decision for my life now to say that look, there were certain things that our parents had to sacrifice and do because they were building this thing from scratch, yes. from the house. Yes. And now that things are a little bit better. You have the opportunity to now delegate people to do certain things and you as a parent now leave those things and go home and be with your children or be with your wife and build that as well because the last thing you want is for that not to work your success here but and then at home you know things are not making sense so that was a lesson that i learned from from also just coming up and now not being ashamed to say that, look this is what we do it's a church and 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 like Gabriel was saying it, it doesn't make it easier when when you have these uh, quote unquote fake prophets or people that are really exploiting people financially and really exploiting people doing fake money doing a bunch of weird things it doesn't make it easier um for you that is in the in the ministry because now it, it, you know they kind of paint everyone with that brush yeah you are also exploiting people you know why is your church so full does that and so really that part i don't appreciate the financial yeah. side and that you know exploitation side yeah, I can imagine because, you know, um, sometimes people don't really understand the call and they just take whatever they are they told and yeah. And and also you f you find that jealousy, you find that you, that's part of life, um, even with people that makes it in life. I think people will always have something to say. And I think um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's vitally important for 
PKs to understand that, you know what, my parents work hard. My parents do A, B, and C. You know, they, they hear when others are sleeping. They must be at prayer meetings. They must be at church come hello high waters. Um, they have to uh, dedicate children. They have to Even marry the people. They the have place. to. It's, 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 not, it's not something that you can shy away from. You know what I'm saying? Or say that I can't. No, no, no. But they have to do it. That's their job. But the unrewarding part of that is that sometimes people will leave church and go maybe to a different church or go and talk nonsense about you hear them talking nonsense about your father sometimes sitting in the barber shop they won't say yeah I like your color dundi and that one let me trust they, their church they steal they do i've had that many times i'm sitting in the barber shop they come in then they're talking about my father then i'm sitting there like yeah bro this is my father you're talking about then maybe the guy that knows me at the way hey bro this is Zakes, he's from that church and what what it's his time i they, so it's like you doing and it's things that they don't they don't have facts they don't no they, they heard from yeah. someone or they heard yeah. the, or they can't put it together in their mind yeah. how, how is it possible for church to grow or how is it possible so then they make up their own solutions of yeah they must be stealing there must be something illegal going on there and so for me it's like you you do their funerals the weddings and stuff and all that stuff you there for the families then later on when they have a grievance against the church or whatever, they go there to the barber shops and the hair salons and whatever and talk nonsense about your family and it's like, yo, okay, yo, fish. Yeah. And it's discouraging. Okay. You want to add anything, Evangelique? No, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it's just the talks, basically. Like Xavier said now, it's really not nice being somewhere and um, people are speaking about your family but they don't even know that you're there or they'll even be speaking about you <laughs> and then um, to you, but they don't know it's you. So I'd say that is the biggest thing I, that Present. strong word yeah. hate <laughs> about yeah. the PK, yeah. Yeah, okay, so now uh, I, I, I can just imagine, you know, because I was also a PK growing up, um, and I was also introduced and even uh, became a first lady. And I was introduced as a uh, pastor's wow. lovely wife. Uh, but I put it straight. I put it straight out there. At the beginning, I just, um, uh, uh, just uh, smiled. smiled and I, I accepted it. Afterwards, I thought, no, man, no, no, no. Those people's never going to learn if I'm not going to tell them. So me, I just talk. I say, I say, sorry, excuse me, I have a name. My name is Joan. And, and that's how it is. And I think that is what, what, what PKs must also do. You must just arise because guys, you sacrificed a lot. <laughs> you then sacrificed. You're the root PK. <laughs> no, you can't be the root PK. Um, why would you say <laughs> then you're rude because you, 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 you can't say what you're thinking. <laughs> that's the other thing. You can't say what you really think. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's that way. You can say the same thing. But the place that you're at, it could be interpreted as something else. It could be two people saying the same thing, but just because you're the PK, you'll be saying, oh, Confidence that shouldn't come out of your, yeah. your mouth or the way you're saying it, you know. Even responding to, to people, it's like the same uh, uh, scenario where a younger person responds maybe to an older person. Yes. You know, you might be doing it the right way, but sometimes because you're just responding, uh, it looks... You know, like it's kind of disrespectful or whatever, but, but like I say, yeah, like you but say, there's you certain say things you still we couldn't... go through that right now, being grown men? Mm, I think now, no, what I've really, now and what I make clear and not as I'm not in, I'm not saying I'm not in ministry. I work with a lot of churches. I'm a lot, of, a lot of churches, like with my business, what I do, but what I really allow people to understand is the difference between my parents and, and the difference you. between who I am now I'm at that point where you can really see because with the calling I could be doing what they're doing but it might fail you know because yeah. it might not be your calling yeah. whatever yeah so I think for me I really allow people to understand I've really like uh, like Evangelique said at the beginning that identity you're accepted with your parents you have to accept you know the fact that it's your parents that but I think as you grow older you have to accept that you become who you are but you don't forget where you come from because yes, everything yes. that we've been taught, you know, from being a child, whatever, you know, it's really 
uh, those things are instrumental and shaped us to you know what it is you know we are the young men and women yeah. we become yeah and 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 yes i can agree with you in, in in that regard that it is important to to put boundaries for yourself you know and say i'm not going to be disrespectful or any which way but i'm a grown person now i can i can talk for myself <laughs> you know what i'm saying and i think it's always taken that um as you grow older um the elderly people no, you know, will always think that, oh, this one is now rude because you stand up for yourself. Um, I, I, I don't know. I always say that it seems in their eyes that you never grow up. That's true. That, <laughs> right? that, that is true. That I've they always see you as the chroniki. As this kid. And so even when you are, and that's something I have to find. Mm -hmm. Like even when I'm older, I'm married, you know, they always just think mad because a lot so of people, yeah, they, they grow up around you. And now you start getting position, you start getting, you know, your, your voice means something, but they don't see that or they don't appreciate it because they just think, ah, this is a slighty, you used to run under the chairs here and now he wants to come tell me or whatever. So that I had, that I Because even like with you, I think where it could be, it's like now that, you might be leading certain people that have been under your father for a while. Yeah. You preaching from a yeah. platform where yeah. then it's like, yo, I need to listen to this yeah. young boy. Yeah. You know, how, you know, dealing with that, it's like some people, and I think that is so dangerous because some people might miss what God has Absolutely. Uh, for them the just destiny, because of yes. that, you know, barrier they're putting in their way because God uses anybody. Absolutely. You know, it's like with your situation, you didn't go in the footsteps of yeah. your dad. You know what I'm saying? And um, you have your own business. Your dad is also in business. Yes. So there's certain skills that is within him. Yes. You know, that is locked up in you. Definitely. And the, the business side is coming out more stronger in you. Definitely. You, you know, like in, 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 like with Evangelic too. My yeah. her father is also business and ministerial. So with Evangelic too. She has more of the other skills, if I'm if I'm right. And with Xavier, it's ministerial. Yes. You know what mm. I'm saying? And I, 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 I can imagine even with 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 with, uh, with Jesse, it's also a different a different skill. You know? So Xavier chose I'm gonna go in my father's footsteps. And what do you expect if someone grew up from baby? And always preached with a mic in your head. Or a brush or something, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, with a brush, with a hairbrush, with a hairbrush. <laughs> and and, and you, you're just preaching, you're just preaching. Obviously, one day or the other, um, God directs you in that, in that path. Because it's just like people's fathers who are maybe a, 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 a pilot or maybe is doing something. The children's one or two children are gonna follow in that footsteps. Evangelic, I would say, she's more like 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 a mother, you know. So she's she has certain skills and certain things that she does, and does it so beautifully, so perfect, you know. And I think that is what people have to understand that you are individual first before you are. Yes, the definitely. Pastor's the pastor's child. <laughs> you you have your own your own uh, uh, identity, and that's very very important. I stand for identity. Oh, I stand for identity because I also know what it is, not to 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 love your authentic self. Therefore, it's my slogan. Love, the best you you could ever be. That is my slogan. And therefore, I believe that it that that it is important. Now, guys, I know um, you are part participating in so many things um, when it comes um, in church without being asked. You must just volunteer. I know Gabe's is in, Gabriel is in, in, in sound. And I suppose when your mother has something on, your father has something on, you just have to jump in. Jump in. 
just do i do uh i do at times uh but there's times like certain way i think they respect my business side as well because i work with a, a lot of churches live streaming you know events sound tech everything so sometimes i might be working a sunday then my dad would have needed my assistance okay so then sometimes i would go there like for 45 minutes to set up help and then i leave again uh, but I think there would be an understanding because, you know, you're being released, you know, to do. And I think that's what I've always appreciated about, about my parents, even my dad. They've never, like, kept you as in, you've got to do this. Yes, you've got to do yes. this. There were times, you know, where we had yes. conversations and certain things. And I think today, like you said, there's, there's just certain things wherever you are, those principles just come up. Like, that's with all the enough. churches I work with, every time I see a church that broadcasts live, I thank God that I had influence within that. Yes. When I see a pastor preaching with a yes. mic that they bought from me, I thank God. So instead of it like looking like it's just one church where I'm building, I thank God it has allowed me to place the a brick all over and add to the kingdom. And I think that's, you know, And you're helping them ministry. actually to make their, their, their live streaming um, look beautiful. Because we've seen, out there. Because we've seen, seen pioneering. Yes. Like, I think when you guys built the first church in the others, we were there with the bricks when they were yes. laying the foundation. So I think the fact that uh, we were there with the pioneering stages, Zeki being old enough to remember, maybe Venge was a bit younger, but I think the fact that we've been there with the pioneering stages, now that you're seeing everything being established, it kind of makes you appreciate things a bit more. Even when I was it, go back to my dad's church a lot, every time I go back, it's I'm just more grateful because I see, yo, where I see where some churches are that I work with, the the, you know, whether it's leadership, whether it's a commitment, certain challenges, there's so much. I think this conversation can go in favor. We, yeah, you can. see where we were can, 50 yeah. years ago, but then you thank God, you know, that he's taken us from that level to where you step in, where there's an office block at the church, you know, where there's staff at the church. Yes. You live again. Yes. You are looking after families. And I think that is amazing that God would just use a few people my mother, my father, yourself, no, true, your husband, huh? to really even, you know, invest no, in thousands true. of people's People, lives. Absolutely. And train them, you know, because yes. you, if you do training in, in church, you can use that in the secular world yes. as well. You have you cameramen, know, you get cameramen in church yes. that starts here, they go to SABC, they go to Super Sports. So God uses you to really activate other people's you know, gifting and stuff. And I think that is, you know, that's just And you see, just those amazing. I call seeds in the ground, that's that seeds that must come up and, and <laughs> must grow. And therefore you must flourish and, so, and become. So I want to go over to, 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 to the exciting part that I love. And that is, what can you celebrate um, growing up as a PK? What, what, what celebration is there within you as an individual? You know, the things that you enjoyed watching the things that you, you uh, Gabriel mentioned a few things now that, you know, um, being that entrepreneur now, but he had to learn in church. And I think a lot of these people that I mentioned just now, like Denzel Washington and them all grew up in church. They must have learned things in church and they are now those uh, role models out there, you know, and that's what you are also so what can you say what is the things that you can celebrate so celebration what, what i can celebrate from my side is i think just growing up in a in a home where you exposed to people i think a lot of times we look at the negative things and we we kind of frown upon the negative things but i think the negative things are the things that build your character I think the negative things are the things that get you to understand how people reason, how people work, what people see. And when you begin to see that, oh, this is how people reason, oh, this is how people are, this is, you know, what happens in this situation or scenario. And, and you begin to put all those life lessons together. For me, one of the biggest life lessons that I can take out of growing up in that environment, and uh, my father will say it a million times, yeah, you're, you kids, you grow up in a leader's house, you must think like a leader, like that, you, you like to mention that. <laughs> and so one of the things that I can celebrate from that is, I was the, I was the, the guy that when, when, a, when an international speaker would come, I'd say, yeah, let me go fetch this guy from the airport, let me yeah. go fetch Dr. So-and-so, yeah. Pastor So-and-so, 
I go fetch them from the airport because for me, that I was driving back and I would sometimes wish there's traffic so that we can kind of talk Chat. in the car, mm. yeah, just have a back and forth that we wish the hotel was fast so that we can be yeah. in the car so we can have a conversation. And um, like Dr. Frank Thomas, I fetched at the airport. The last time I, I fetched uh, Dr. Frank or Dr. Jeremiah, right? Like, I mean, big people in, yeah. in US politics that are big, you know, uh, names all over the world that people know. If you mention those names, people know you Google those names, it comes up on the top. And um, I had the opportunity to share to share the lounge yeah. with these kind of people. I, I had the opportunity to when we take them out for supper after the service, or you know we have lunch before the service, or they sleep over on the weekend or whatever. You have that opportunity to engage with them, mm. make a connection. You get to know their families. Then when you travel, you know people in that countries. And so for me, that is a that's a massive thing that I can say. I've met people from different places around the world because of being, having access to those lounges or having access to picking them up at the airport, having access to dropping them at the hotel, stuff like that. So for me, that is something that I can probably be proud of or celebrate yeah. now. I think yeah, that's, that's awesome. Good. For me, it's more like, uh, I think like uh, the fruits, man. You know, when you see throughout the years when people have come in broken, yes. firstly getting saved, and when you see people's lives being restored, man, you know, what has been done through, like you said, humble beginnings, a yes. garage, yes. you know, a house, I think more than finance, more than anything, I think the greatest celebration and thing one could celebrate is when one enters into the kingdom yes. of God. So I think that just brings so much joy to me when you see how many people have walked into these doors and their lives never I've been the changed. same. Boys a, becoming men, yeah. getting married here, yeah. businesses, the their first children businesses, are their afterwards. children. Mm. I think that's that gives you that, you know what, maybe all that times that wasn't there, maybe this, I think it was worth it. I yes, think absolutely. that allows you, because it's like their celebration, their victory, yes. it becomes ours yes. as a family. Yes, that's a fact. Um, what would you celebrate, Evangelic? Um, I would celebrate, I'm thinking of let me say last week when Leonie was mentioning mentioning um, on your talk with Joan yeah. about being chosen yeah. for a situation in order for her to make a difference in someone mm. else's life. And I think for me that was Scarlett's situation. Mm. Had I not grown up in mm. a PK home, yes. I wouldn't have understood mm. how that negative situation could have turned into something where I am now uplifting other mothers. Um, if I think about my Instagram, something as small as my DMs, the amount of women um, I come across daily, I get up to five DMs a day just for encouragement. Their daughters might not be going through hearing loss, but um, I'm in connection with a lady now that her child just had a heart operation and now they found a blood clot on the brain. Certain things like that, people from different countries that's reaching out to me saying, I know it's not the same situation, but as a mother, how did you get through A, B, and C? So I think had I not had the influence of God in my life so consistently, um, it's easy for people that get saved later on in life. When something happens, they just fall back. Yeah. But like Gabriel mentioned earlier, when you know where you came from, yes. it stays in the back of your mind constantly. And that is how you're able to make a difference going forward. And then also what you mentioned like earlier was in terms of even now growing up, yes, when you were younger, it was you, the pastor's child, pastor's child never had a name, but as a adult, once you then have your own business, it's so much more easier <laughs> to get clients <laughs> because <laughs> like, Zav yeah, like Xavier yeah, mentioned, yeah. <laughs> the kind of people you come into contact with, um, when people come down from America, for example, that knows da or ma, when they in South Africa, they automatically call you up. Um, I need a makeup artist. So even though in that time you didn't appreciate it, business wise, going forward as an adult, you automatically have all these contacts, contacts that is right at your hand. Like you were saying, all the churches, mm -hmm. do you think? Churches yeah, would call you for those things. Um, so, yeah, yeah. you kind of 
appreciate it. <laughs> and I think even like you're saying now, it's like even when Zeke spoke about uh, leadership, where his dad yeah. says like you grow up, you know, yeah. leaders. And I think um, being in ministry and the word of God, you know, brings that leadership out of you. Absolutely. So even with well. us as children, we don't even see me starting my own business. Not to say I didn't go work for someone. But I, I felt uncomfortable because I knew I had a lead that leadership <laughs> in me. Yeah. It didn't have to be on a pulpit. Yeah. But, but leading a business, own. I can go bigger. I think it's because of that foundation. Yeah. That it doesn't have to necessarily just be from a spiritual side, you know. But I think the foundation, uh, the core definition of leadership is within the word of God. And I think that is what has been. I think missing. leadership in church is actually yeah. more strong than organization because <laughs> yeah. you need to Quality learn to is. lead without money. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting yeah. Money. You don't give a salary and you know, it's best That's true. Now you it's have effect, to yeah. Things, yeah. And That's you know, true. you can just work all the salary if someone yeah. does something stupid at your work or fire the person or whatever. Yeah, you, know, you can't. Then yeah, you must now work with them. Then you find it's a, it's a family situation. Then you must counsel the family. Then this and this. You know, you actually invested in the people's yes. entire life. You yes. can't just fire him and tell him, I No, you can't. But, <laughs> but another point of what, what Benji and, and Gabriel was mentioning is, I think what, what Benji was saying, there's an element of trust also. Yes. When they see your parents' track record. Yes. Like our church, almost 30 years. And so they see, and your father's church as well, it's been around I yeah. mean, since. Yeah. Anyone who talks about, you know, brown churches, well, no, Crystal, JCC at the time, uh, the different... Those are the, the big churches that rise yeah. immediately to the top of the yeah. brown churches. And because it has that track record and that history of, you know what, these churches have been around. The second, like you said, uh, even the time when you were dating girls, you're like, yeah, this is the pastor's son. You know, <laughs> they, they, there's an element of trust. It's yeah, like, it's true. Yeah, these people are, are the church, you know, yeah. you saw that they come from a good background, they come from a good home. And that, that like in what your with your business thing, people know, okay, now if I phone those people, they're not gonna drop me, they're not because there's that element of trust that you've built with your parents and They can also be a, 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 a disadvantage in it because they feel that you're a pastor's daughter or pastor's son, they always want a lower price. Freebies. <laughs> or, or, do it or, for God. <laughs> yeah, do it for God type of thing. But yeah, when you're in a business, you have to be strong. Nice. You have to take your stance. You have to say that, you know what, this is, this is, this is my, yeah. this is my, this is yeah. This is I have to church. think sometimes, even like dealing with pastors, I have to think at times, sometimes how I respond because it's like, hey, the son is going to tell my father, your son was very <laughs> like, you know, it's like, but then I had to sometimes, People needed, they saw me as, maybe at the beginning when we started our meeting, they saw me as the, the bishop's son. But afterwards, then they could see me. Yeah. Yes. This is, there's yes. business and yes. then there's, there's yes. ministers. I and think I think that's, that's a fine line. Up. That is very important to step up, to step up and say, you know what, this is now beside the church. It's not, it's not church <laughs> because it's, it's yeah, work. And, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and this is my life, you know, this is, yes. this is, this is me. Now, yeah, I'm so happy to, to actually call it done. <laughs> but before we go, it was very nice chatting to you and hear your views to your, um, where you at, what you, uh, learned and what was the things you did not like and so on because it's always good um to actually give people out there the understanding you know as 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 growing up as a pastor's kid because some people have misconceptions with um, being a pk they just expect certain things that you you're not human being you you a little something that as evangelique mentioned you are put on a pedestal so i think it's very important to have these conversations all the time you know um seeing a lot of things in church that is another story you know seeing so many things happening in church and how how your parents maybe were treated in the church from church people and so you can go on and on and on and on um, but before we say um goodbye um we have a little mirror in front of us that i would really would like to just um bring you in there uh, let me get mine now this mirror is actually a uh, it's an image reflecting back at you so i would want to ask you if you are made pastor tomorrow no 
what will you change in the church? What will you keep? Wow. Um, so, so uh, what, what is it that you think um, can be changed in, in church? What will you change as, as a pastor? Put yourself um, in the feet of a pastor or a leader or bishop or whatever. Uh, you are now a leader of your own church, right? What image will reflect back? Who's going to start? <laughs> do you have anything there? Do you have a thought? I still know how to put it there. Eh? Yeah, I'm also going to just formulate it. Do you have anything there? I think for me, it's just the... Uh, um, the transition process. I think it worked on that, that soon. Because I see a lot of churches transitioning from the pioneering to the Joshua generation. Yeah where there's always a yeah 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 so so and changing would you think, there would you think that that comes from the congregation uh, don't you think if getting you, the if you prepare them getting early? the young people more in, involved yeah. earlier okay because i think a lot of leadership even though a lot of churches there is some young people but you still see a lot of you know the, the guys that start i think it's an element of of like we started with a pastor we were here since the beginning, you keep now coming, you want to come change things yourself. Change. I think it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing. But there's certain things in place you'll so never you know unless the, you yeah. have that experience. As you will get the, the young people more involved because it's a younger generation right yes. now that we are living in. And I think it's more than right even, you know, to, to get the younger people because um, our thinking, attitudes and a lot of other things is not the same. So I think because we live in a, in a young world, you know, I think it is important to, to make that transition and, and it's going to happen. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and help one another, you know, because we have sometimes not that I say the younger generation don't have the wisdom and that, but you've seen more as an elderly person, um, and maybe you don't see it so we can we can actually help one so another together, yeah yeah, so yeah one knows better the other one doesn't know anything because we both contribute absolutely okay so what is your so, sixpence so what what interesting is that i had the, the similar thought that what came and, and you didn't know to, how, to how to say it yeah and so, and so but I me, think you and Gabriel discussed this already. No, so we now didn't. we just think <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Friends is <laughs> preaching next week. That's what we discussed. <laughs> so for me to be the same thing, to keep to, to, to keep things fresh and to keep leadership on their toes and to not get to a place where people get molded into a position where they feel now oh, this is my position and whoever comes into the church. Because what also happens in churches that clicks for and he's us yeah, for his friends, fact, we yeah. operate together all the time and then what happens is naturally you sometimes don't even realize it but other people don't feel welcome because they feel like oh you're already a, a click together you'll operate together okay so you church will actually the demolish church. the clicks i'll demolish the clicks yeah church within the church i'll demolish yeah. the clicks and also be ever open not the spirit to say that whoever comes come in and let's grow together yes your sixpence evangelic mine is like we've been speaking about being a PK, my alert comes from being a PK. So um, for me, I would, the same like you have Bible school and you have counseling and everything, I would add a PK study. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be like for leaders as well, how to treat, not necessarily how to treat PKs, but don't Having the better try, understanding. Yeah, because I feel like even in Sunday school and stuff, your Sunday school teachers treat PKs, not only your main pastor, it could be the, the youth leaders, the youth leaders pastor, pastor, it could be the worship daughter. leader's mm. daughter kind of a thing. You get treated extremely ugly not to show favoritism. Okay. But they turn that favoritism into like, we hate you. Okay. And then the kids automatically don't want anything to do with church so i think it, there would be a slight like a course yeah 
how we deal with the situation not to make it look like favoritism but this is how it is and then maybe also have a course for your pks of getting let's stand together we do something together you know like the same way you would okay. have ladies yeah 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 yeah. this is only for the pks oh, I'm with you. kind of a thing I'm with you. so um yeah something like that and to end it off can i say something yeah um like I say, my heart is from being like a PK. And I know there is many kids that do struggle with that, specifically girls in church. You know, guys are always like, so be it, take me as I am. But as girls, as women, we struggle a lot with identity. And um, as a PK, I just want to speak to other girls out there and say that it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is find out who you are gain the confidence to be you in every situation and you will grow from there. Um, with my mom's birthday last week, uh, two weeks ago, um, I shared a story about somebody who did not know me in my Miss South Africa journey and she happened to be a contestant as well. And we never spoke two words to each other, but she came up to me after seeing my mom at one of the functions and she said, I actually know your mother from one conference I went to and her words was what your mother did for other women you just need to take it up there you will be blessed in everything that you do because of the sacrifices your mom gave to other women so think about the sacrifices your parents are giving up for you just to she made the example of normal people start at the bottom in their growth and in their success but because of who your parents are you have you already starting on your 60 yeah, percent so just true. take that 40 percent up and make a success out of yourself don't fall into the pastors kids are all drunkards they're useless they all of these things be that success mm -hmm. yeah be that success straight and don't let your parents' sacrifices go for granted, no matter how small your church, no matter how big the church. Just take it higher and higher and prove to the world that we are good people. We do deserve life <laughs> and happiness. Yeah. Amen. Well, we came to the end of our show and didn't Evangelique just uh, wrap it up so nicely. Um, thank you so much, Gabriel, for coming. I Good really night, had a good chat. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Evangelique. It was really a very nice show. And how did you uh, find when you look into the mirror and you are made pastor of the day? Uh, what will you change? I want you to just put it on the inside show. Let me uh, see what your comments are. And then we will take it from there. Well, on this note, I want to greet you. I want to say... Um, you can make it and you can make it very strong so yes from the inside show i love you god loves you best Mwah.